and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Shaw, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Bob. This video is part of a series on plantar fasciitis. You can find it at bobandbrad.com. This one's called The Plantar Fascia Dirty Dozen. It's stopping your healing. This is a list of 12 things that can prevent your plantar fascia from healing or getting better. They can also cause plantar fascia. Sure. Pla pa plantar fasciitis. It's got nothing to do with the movie. Nothing to do with the movie. What it movie? The Dirty Dozen. Oh, The Dirty Dozen. No, Charles Bronson. No, no, no. I've heard, if you're over 50 years old, yeah, you're probably you probably know what watched. it is. <laughs> that, that's right. You can probably cry even dirty. Okay, number one, standing or walking on hard surfaces for a long period of time. That's just something you want to keep in mind. Maybe you work that way, um, and you, that's where you're going to want to make sure you have the, the correct footwear. Right. Um, the so arch support, uh, some cushion there. This is a one that actually, uh, anything that overextends the plantar fascia. So as you recall, the plantar fascia starts in the heel here, goes up into the toes. Mm -hmm. So if you do anything like this, and this just happened to a friend of mine, he was working on a roof and he was sitting like this. Right. And like Brad mentioned when we were talking earlier, if you lean back even more like this, now you're putting a lot of stress. You probably can see this, can't you, Mike? You can't sit on your heels, Bob? I can't go any further than that. Oh, I don't so, know if I can or not. But yeah, right. I, like if I go like this, yeah. I mean, it depends how flexible you are. Yeah. But I'm really stretching that right now when I push. And if you're like this for a sustained period of time, that, you know, that is really going to stress. That's killer. Um, and also like if gardening or, you know, anytime you're on your knees like this, um, right. if you're working on carpet or whatever, I mean, it's going to. Uh, so if you problems. could flatten your foot out and plant or Yeah, this it. would even be better. Yeah. Absolutely. If you tolerate that. Yeah, if you tolerate it, especially if you have a shoe on, it might feel a lot better. Right. A lunge. So if I do a lunge, Brad, and I go forward like this, yep. yeah, yeah, that would be good. I'm going to give it, I'll use it for a pointer. Yeah. The, oh, I was oh, going to use it to help. <laughs> yeah. So if I do a lunge, as you can see, I'm, I'm really stretching that back toe and foot right again. Here. Yep. Uh, another one would be heel raises. Um, obviously, you're going to put a lot of stress on it, too. Right. Not that, I mean, I think you could do that, but I wouldn't do it while you have plantar fasciitis. Sure. Yeah, that, that's probably one of the least stressful ones. Right, of those. right. Uh, next one, acute trauma. Um, you don't want to be jumping from things uh, off the, tr the back of a truck or, <laughs> you know, off the stairs. Uh, I mean, when you have plantar fasciitis, right, you, can, right. you can rip it right back open well, again. Well, younger people do that. We we don't jump All off. people can't do that, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, next one, number four, tight calves or hamstrings. And we're, we talked about that in another video. Y y if your ha calves or hamstrings are tight, the motion's got to come from somewhere. So yeah. there's going to be more motion in the foot then, and it's going to cause more stress on the plantar fasciitis. Right. So, so that, that calf muscle goes to the heel, connected to the heel. It's really one, one unit, one unit we, we look at it as. All right, the next thing is, and I've seen this in patients before, so let's say they've injured their other foot. Maybe they fractured it. Sure, so, no weight bearing. Yeah, no weight bearing, so it would be more like this. And um, so they have extra stress on this foot. Right. And we sometimes you have them hop a little bit. Right. I have seen more times than not where a person develops plantar fasciitis because they're doing all that hopping. Right. You know, and we're using the walker here, but a lot of people with crutches. Right. right? And you're really... Uh, moving where the crutch is doing, trying to cover a lot of distance. You're still at school or at work, and you're you're, you're trying to keep yeah, up with your old self. You're jamming that foot. Yep. Uh, number six, uh, doing too much too fast. Now this is really important as you start to heal, and you say, "Hey, it's it's doing better. Right. I want to get back to running." Yep. So what do you do? You go back and run five miles the first day because it feels good, and all of a sudden it comes roaring back again. And you may not feel it while you're running. It may not be till the next morning when you wake up and you stand on the ground again, and you say, "Oh, I'm back to where I was." Yeah, you're gonna want to really take things slow and really uh, incrementally. You know, take on more yeah. and more, 10% at the most. Right, a run-walk program. Right, right, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, number seven, dirty dozen weight gain. Now, this is, you know, could be fat. It could also be muscle if you're going to get any more, you know, putting on more muscle. Sure, sure. More weight on the body, more weight on the extremities. Right, you know. it could be you're going to go hiking with a backpack. Right, that, very good point, Brad. Yes, yeah. uh, that's an excellent point. If you're 
doing too much carrying of, of weight. Right. It's so, going to put more know, stress. If that's the case, you got to make sure you have good shoes with our. Yeah, I just have a patient right now that ha they're going to be doing some tree cutting. And I go, you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you know, he's going to be lifting up yeah. logs. I mean, yeah. so. Uh, number eight, uh, poorly fitting shoes. We're going to have a whole uh, segment on this, mm -hmm. on, on how to look at your shoes. But they definitely can um, contribute to plant right, fasciitis right. and keep it going, if, especially if you have shoes that are wore out and they're and you know they're causing you to, to right. pronate. I've had uh, people just change their shoes and have some significant yeah. improvement. I I I'm a runner, and I, when I start to feel plantar fasciitis, I mean yeah. I start to feel pain on the bottom of my feet. I, that's the, I make sure I change my shoes, and it always helps. Sure. So. Yeah. Uh, number nine is running, jogging, aerobics, dancing, anything you know, like that. Obviously, is gonna obviously is gonna make things worse. Right. So you gotta you gotta stop that. I'm I'm afraid you're gonna have to find an alternative. Right. While right. You know, I mean, biking, swimming, sure, something right. like that. Right. Uh, Try to get that impact off of there. Uh, number ten is, is poor running technique or walking technique. And again, we're gonna have a video on this on how to walk correctly. If you walk to the point where you hit your heel first, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to put a lot more stress on that plantar fasciitis. We want you to hit the heel and the forefoot at the same time right. or very you know, close right. at the same time. And we'll have a whole video on that. So if you look at our series. Uh, number 11, if you actually have one leg that's longer than the other. and Which there's a lot of people that do and aren't even aware of it. Right. Uh, it, maybe not until you get older. Your body's typically adjusted to it. but Things change as, yeah. as you get older. I mean, I've seen a half inch up to, you know, an inch and a half. Well, sometimes when you have arthritis or knee right. replacement, then right. it really, yep. really yeah. accelerates it. Yeah. So um, if you know that you have one or someone's told you you have one, you'd put a wedge or a cup underneath the shorter side right. so that you make up for that, that discrepancy. Uh, number 12, the, the one that we've already mentioned in a, a previous video is no walking with bare feet or stocking feet. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to always make sure you got shoes with good arch support or um, slippers with good arch right. support. Yep. Always, never do any. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> these are three additional things that you can't control really. Um, if you are diabetic, there's going to be less blood flow to there. Yeah. The, the plantar fascia already is something that doesn't have a lot of blood flow anyway. Exactly. So um, you, you're going to be more at risk. As you get older, right? As we get older, <laughs> uh, the fascia gets older and brittle. I mean, just like we. <laughs> so. Yep. The gravity takes over. The things change. Your discs, everything. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. That's when, uh, when I think diet does have an impact on, right. on your overall. But that's another topic. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the final thing that you probably can't control to some extent or, or di maybe didn't want to control is pregnancy. Um when you are pregnant, you actually have the hormone relaxin mm -hmm. that helps relax the ligaments. Obviously, going to make the, uh, the, the delivery of the baby easier, but it's also going to relax the ligaments in your foot, and you're going to uh, actually tend to pronate more or have right. your flat feet more. All those little ligaments holding the, the bones, because you have so many little bones in your feet. When they relax, it's going to collapse and yeah, stress actually. the stress that fashion one more thing with pregnancy huh isn't there a lot of them that things that go on yeah yeah you're, you're making a on. baby and there's so you got to <laughs> sacrifice all right what would we know about that that's right for men all right watch the rest of our program at bobandbrad.com thank you thanks